Section 37 of The Interpretation of Dreams. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Interpretation of Dreams by Sigmund Freud. Translated by A. A. Brill. Section 37 The Effects in Dreams. Part 2. In the dream about the odd task which the elder brook sets me that of preparing my own pelvis, I am aware in the dream itself of not feeling appropriate horror. Now this is a wish fulfillment in more senses than one. The preparation signifies the self-analysis which I perform, as it were, by publishing my book on dreams, which I actually find so painful that I postponed the printing of the completed manuscript for more than a year. The wish now arises that I may disregard this feeling of aversion, and for that reason I feel no horror, groven, which also means to grow grey, in the dream. I should much like to escape groven in the other senses too, for I am already growing quite grey, and the grey in my hair wants me to delay no longer. For we know that at the end of the dream this thought secures representation. I shall have to leave my children to reach the goal of their difficult journey without my help. In the two dreams that transfer the expression of satisfaction to the moments immediately after waking, this satisfaction is the one case motivated by the expectation that I am now going to learn what is meant by I have already dreamed of this, and refers in reality to the birth of my first child, and in other case it is motivated by the conviction that that which has been announced by a premonitory sign is now going to happen and the satisfaction is that which i have felt on the arrival of my second son here the same effects that dominated in the dream thoughts have remained in the dream but the process is not quite so simple as this in any dream if the two analyses are examined a little more closely it will be seen that this satisfaction which does not succumb to censorship receives reinforcement from a source which must fear the censorship, and whose effect would certainly have aroused a position if it had not screened itself by a similar and readily admitted effect of satisfaction from the permitted source, and had, so to speak, sneaked in behind it. I am unfortunately unable to show this is the case of the actual dream, but an example from another situation will make my meaning intelligible. I will put the following case. Let there be a person near me, whom I hate so strongly, that I have a lively impulse to rejoice should anything happen to him. But the moral side of my nature does not give away to this impulse. I do not dare to express the sinister wish, and when something does happen to him, which he does not deserve, I suppress my satisfaction, and force myself to thoughts and expressions of regret. Everyone will at some time have found himself in such a position. But now, let it happen that the hated person, through some transgression of his own, draws upon himself a well-deserved calamity. I shall now be allowed to give free rein to my satisfaction, heart is being visited by a just punishment, and I shall be expressing an opinion which coincides with that of the other impartial persons. But I observe that my satisfaction proves to be more intense than that of the others, for it has received reinforcement from another source from a hatred which has hitherto prevented by inner censorship from furnishing the effect, but which, under the altered circumstances, it is no longer prevented from doing so. This case generally occurs in social life when antipathetic persons or the adherents of an unpopular minority have been guilty of some offence. Their punishment is then usually commensurate not with their guilt but with their guilt plus the ill will against them that has hitherto not been put into effect. Those who punish them doubtless commit an injustice, but they are prevented from becoming aware of it by satisfaction arising from the release within themselves of a suppression of long-standing. In such cases, the quality of effect is justified, but not its degree, and self-criticism that has been appeased in respect of the first point is only too ready to neglect to scrutinize the second point. Once you have opened the doors, more people enter than it was your original intention to admit. 
a striking feature of neurotic character namely that in it causes capable of evoking affect produces results which are qualitatively justified but quantitatively excessive is to be explained on these lines in so far as it admits of a psychological explanation at all but the excess of affect proceeds from unconscious and hitherto suppressed affective sources which are capable to establish an associative connection with the actual occasion and for whose liberation of affect the unprotested and permitted source of affects opens up the desired path our attention is thus called to the fact that the relation from mutual inhibition must not be regarded as the only relation obtaining between the suppressed and the suppressing psychic institution the cases in which the two institutions bring about a pathological result of cooperation and mutual reinforcement deserve just as much attention these hints regarding the psychic mechanism will contribute to our understanding of the expression of affects in dreams a gratification which makes its appearance in a dream and which of course may readily be found in its proper place in the dream thoughts may not always be fully explained by means of this reference as a rule it is necessary to search for a second source in the dream thoughts upon which the pressure of censorship rests and which under this pressure would have yielded not gratification but the contrary effect had it not been enabled by the presence of the first dream source to free its gratification effect from repression and reinforce the gratification springing from the other source hence affects which appear in dream appear to be formed by a confluence of several tributaries and are overdetermined in respect of the material of the dream thoughts sources of affect which are able to furnish the same affect combine in the dream work in order to produce it some insight into these invoked relations is gained from the analysis of admirable dream in which the non vexed continues the central point in this dream expressions of affect of different qualities are concentrated at two points in the manifest content hostile and painful impulses in the dream itself we have the phrase overcome by strange emotions overlap one another at point where i destroy my antagonistic friend with a couple of words at the end of the dream i am greatly pleased and i am quite ready to believe in a possibility which i recognize as absurd when i am awake namely that there are revenants who can be swept away by a mere wish i have not yet mentioned the occasion of this dream it is an important one and leads us far down into the meaning of the dream from my friend in berlin whom i have designated as hefel i had received the news that he was about to undergo an operation and that the relatives of his living in vienna would inform me as to his condition the first few messages after the operation were not very reassuring and caused me great anxiety i should have liked to go to him myself but at that time i was afflicted with a painful complaint which made my movement a torment i now learned from the dream thoughts that i feared for this dear friend's life i knew that his only sister with whom i had never been acquainted had died in after a brief illness in the dream fl tells me about his sister and says in three quarters of an hour she was dead i must have imagined that his constitution was not much stronger and that i should soon be travelling in spite of my health in response to far worse news that i should arrive too late for which i should eternally reproach myself this reproach that i should arrive too late has become the central point of the dream but it has been represented in a scene in which the revered teacher of my student years brucke reproaches me of the same thing with a terrible look from his blue eyes what brought about this alteration of the scene will soon become apparent the dream cannot reproduce the scene itself as i experienced it to be sure it leaves the blue eyes to the other man but it gives me the part of the annihilator and inversion which is obviously the work of wish fulfillment my concern for the life of my friend my self reproach for not having gone to him my shame he had come to me in vienna unobtrusively my desire to consider myself excused on account of my illness all this build up an emotional tempest which is distinctly felt in my sleep and which rages in that region of my dream thoughts but there was another thing in the occasion of the dream which had quite the opposite effect 
with the unfavourable news during the first days of the operation i received an injunction to speak to no one about the whole affair which hurt my feelings for it betrayed an unnecessary trust of my discretion i knew of course that this request did not proceed from my friend but that it was due to clumsiness or excessive timidity on the part of the messenger yet the concealed reproach affected me very disagreeably because it was not altogether unjustified as we know only reproaches which have something in them have the power to hurt years ago when i was younger than i am now i knew two men who were friends and who honoured me with their friendship and i quite superfluously told one of them what the other have said of him this incident of course had nothing to do with the affairs of my friend ethel but i have never forgotten the reproaches to which i had to listen on that occasion one of the two friends between whom i had trouble was professor fleshel the other one i will call by his baptismal name yosef a name which was borne also by my friend and antagonist p who appears in this dream in the dream the element unobtrusively points to reproach that i cannot keep anything to myself and so does the question of i felt as to how much of his affairs i have told to p but it is the intervention of that old memory which transposes the reproach for arriving too late from the present to the time when i was working in brooke's laboratory and by replacing the second person in the annihilation scene of the dream by a yourself i enable this scene to represent not only the first reproach that i have arrived too late but also that the other reproach more strongly affected by the repression to the effect that i had not kept secrets the work of condensation and displacement in this dream as well as the motives for it are now obvious my present trivial annoyance at this injunction not to divulge secrets draws reinforcement from the springs that flow far beneath the surface and so swells to a stream of hostile impulses towards persons who are in reality dear to me the source which furnishes the reinforcement is to be found in my childhood i have already said that my warm friendships as well as my enmities with persons of my own age go back to childish relations to my nephew who was a year older than i in these he had the upper hand and i early learned how to defend myself we lived together were inseparable and loved one another but at times as the statements of old persons testify we used to squabble and accuse one another in a certain sense all my friends are incarnations of this first figure they are all revenants my nephew himself returned when a young man and then we were like caesar and brutus an intimate friend and a hated enemy i have always been indispensable to my emotional life i have always been able to create them anew and not infrequently my childish ideal has been so closely approached that friend and enemy have coincided in the same person but not simultaneously of course not in constant alternation as was the case in my early childhood how when such associations exist a recent occasion of emotion may cast back to the infantile occasion and substitute this as a cause of the effect i shall not consider now such an investigation would properly belong to the psychology of unconscious thought or psychological explanation of the neuroses let us assume for the purposes of dream interpretation that the childish recollection presents itself or is created by the fantasy with more or less the following content we two children quarrel on account of some object just what we shall leave undecided although the memory or illusion of memory has a very definite object in view and each claims that he got there first and therefore has the first right to it we come to blows might comes before right according to the indications of the dream i must have known that i was in the wrong noticing the error myself but this time i am the stronger and take possession of the battlefield the defeated combatant hurries to my father his grandfather and accuses me i defend myself with the words which i have heard from my father i hate him because he hit me thus this recollection or more probably fantasy 
which forces itself upon my attention in the course of the analysis without further evidence i myself do not know how become a central item of the dream thoughts which collects the affective impulses prevailing in the dream thoughts as the bowl of a fountain collects the water that flows into it from this point of dream thoughts flow along the following channels it serves you right that you have had to make way for me why did you try to push me off i don't need you i will soon find someone else to play with etc then the channels are opened through which these thoughts flow back again into the dream representation for such an otetua ke jimimite i once had to reproach my deceased friend yosef he was next to me in the line of promotion in brookes laboratory but advancement there was very slow neither of the two assistants budged from his place and youth became impatient my friend who knew that his days were numbered and was bound to no intimate relation to his superior sometimes gave free expression to his impatience as this superior was a man seriously ill the wish to see him removed by promotion was susceptible of an obnoxious secondary interpretation several years earlier to be sure i myself had cherished even more intensely the same wish to obtain a post which had fallen vacant wherever there are gradations of rank and promotions the way is opened for suppression of covetous wishes shakespeare's prince hal cannot rid himself of the temptation to see how the crown fits even at the bedside of a sick father but as many readily be understood the dream inflicts this inconsiderate wish not upon me but upon my friend it is particularly easy for me to hide my ego in my dreams behind persons of this name since joseph was the name of the dream interpreter in the bible as he was ambitious i slew him as he would not expect that the other man would make way for him the man himself has been put out of the way i harbor these thoughts immediately after attending the unveiling of the memorial of the other man at the university part of the satisfaction which i feel in the dream may therefore be interpreted a just punishment it serves you right at a funeral of this friend a young man made the following remark which seemed rather out of place the preacher talked as though the world could no longer exist without this one human being here was a stirring of revolt in the heart of a sincere man whose grief had been disturbed by exaggeration but with this speech are connected the dream thoughts no one is really irreplaceable how many men have already escorted to the grave but i am still alive i have survived them all i claim the field such a thought at the moment when i fear that if i make a journey to see him i shall find my friend no longer among the living permits only the further development that i am glad once more to have survived someone that it is not i who have died but he that i must of the field as once i was in the imagined scene of my childhood this satisfaction infantile in origin at the fact that i am master of the field covers the greater part of the affect which appears in the dream i am glad that i am the survivor i express this sentiment with the naive egoism of the husband who says to his wife if one of us dies i shall move to paris my expectation takes it as a matter of course that i am not the one to die it cannot be denied that great self control is needed to interpret one's dreams and to report them one has to reveal oneself as the sole villain among all the noble souls with whom one shares the breath of life thus i find it quite comprehensible that the revenants should exist only as long as one wants them and that they can be obliterated by a wish it was for this reason that my friend joseph was punished but the revenants are the successive incarnations of the friend of my childhood i am also gratified at having replaced this person for myself over and over again and a substitute will doubtless soon be found even for the friend whom i am now on the point of losing no one is irreplaceable but what was the dream censorship doing in the meantime why does it not raise the most emphatic objection to a train of thoughts characterized by such brutal selfishness and transform the satisfaction inherent therein into extreme discomfort i think it is because other objectionable train of thoughts referring to the same person result also in satisfaction and with their effect 
cover the proceeding from the forbidden infantile sources in another stratum of thought i said to myself at a ceremony of unveiling the memorial i have lost so many dear friends some through death some through the resolution of friendship is it not good that substitutes have presented themselves that i have gained a friend who means more to me than the others could and whom i shall now always retain at an age when it is not easy to form new friendships the gratification of having found this substitute for my lost friend can be taken over into dream without interference but behind it there are sneaks in the hostile feeling of malicious gratification from the infantile source childish affection undoubtedly helps to reinforce the rational affection of today but childish hatred has also found its way into representation but besides this there is in the dream a distinct reference to another train of thoughts which may result in gratification some time before this after long waiting a little daughter was born to my friend i knew how he had grieved for the sister whom he had lost at an early age and i wrote to him that i felt that he would transfer to this child the love he had felt for her that this little girl would at last make him forget his irreparable loss thus this strain also connects up with the intermediary thoughts of latent dream content from which paths radiate into most contrary directions no one is irreplaceable see here are only revenants all those whom one has lost return and now the bonds of association between contradictory components of the dream thoughts are more tightly drawn by accidental circumstance that my friend's little daughter bears the same name as the girl playmate of my own youth who was just my own age and the sister of my oldest friend and antagonist i heard the name pauline with satisfaction and in order to allude to this coincidence i replaced one yosef in the dream by another yosef and found it impossible to suppress the identical initials in the same fleshel and ephel from this point a train of thought runs to the naming of my own children i insisted that the name should not be chosen according to the fashion of the day but should be determined by regard for the memory of those dear to us the children's names makes them revenants and finally is not the procreation of children for all men the only way to access to immortality i shall add only a few observations as to the effects of dreams considered from another point of view in the psyche of the sleeper an affective tendency which can be called a mood may be contained as its dominant element and may induce a corresponding mood in the dream this mood may be the result of experiences and thoughts of the day or it may be of somatic origin in either case it will be accompanied by corresponding train of thought that this ideational content of dream thoughts should at one time determine the affective tendency primarily while another time it is awakened in a secondary manner by somatically determined emotional disposition is indifferent for the purposes of dream formation this is always subject to restriction that it can represent only a wish fulfillment and that it may lend its psychic energy to the wish alone the mood actually present will receive the same treatment as a sensation which actually emerges during sleep which is either neglected or reinterpreted in the sense of wish fulfillment painful moods during sleep become the motive of the dream in as much as they awake energetic wishes which dream has to fulfill the material in which they inhere is elaborated until it is serviceable for the expression of the wish fulfillment the more intense and more dominating the element of the painful mood in the dream thoughts the more surely will the most strongly suppressed wish impulses take advantage of opportunity to secure representation for thanks to actual existence of discomfort which otherwise they would have to create they find that the more difficult part of work necessary to ensure representation has already been accomplished and with these observations we touch once more upon the problem of anxiety dreams which will prove to be the boundary case of dream activity end of section 37 Recording by Lambda.